the watch liars have put themselves into a bind and it's a paradox of their own creation. I'm going to demonstrate this paradox today with two of these people. Um, first of all, Britt Gillette recently made a video, If the Rapture is Coming, Why Go on Living? And uh, let, let's let him explain what he's talking about. Well, if the rapture is coming, why go on living? Now, believe it or not, this is a question that I've gotten for years and emails and comments. People ask. Believe it or not? Believe it or not, really? <laughs> this is a question everyone asks these people. If the rapture is soon, within months or maybe a year or two, which, by the way, none of these ra rapture people will say, we have five years left. We could have 10 years left. We have 20 years left. They mock anyone who suggests that we have that much time. In fact, they call people like me not really good Christians or even worse names. They scorn and ridicule and mock and scoff at anyone who dares to suggest that they actually don't know how soon the rapture is or even if it is soon. So I don't understand this, believe it or not. I mean, is he talking to the rest of the club who hasn't even thought of this? Asking me. And what they mean by that isn't, well, why go on breathing? But what they mean is if you really, sometimes it's adversarial. It's, well, if you think the rapture is coming, why uh, do you, did you buy a house? Why do you save for the future? Why do you do any of these things? Sometimes it's more said of Jesus is coming back. Why should I do these things? And they're talking about saving, investing, uh, getting married, having children, buying a house, living life. See, if, if Brit and the rest were honest, they would say that about themselves. They are asking themselves this question. If I really believe the rapture is within months, why did I just build a new house or buy a new house like Brit did? Why am I saving for anything? Why do I care what my kids do, whether they get married or not, what their careers are going to be? They're asking themselves that question because they've created this entire industry around the concept that Jesus is absolutely coming soon within months or a year, all the time. So then they have to dig themselves out of this miry pit that they've created for themselves. Life, making plans for the future, plans that may include, well, living a full lifetime, our full expected lifetime. And that... Those are good questions to ask because I believe we should make plans for the future, but Why? we know that we can make whatever plans we want. Ultimately, God's plan will prevail. Of course. But I believe that we're to live life exactly as if we will live a full lifetime, but we should do that expecting Jesus could return at any moment. And that listen to him carefully we should live a full life expecting that Jesus could return at any moment and of course that's true that makes logical sense you you should live your life and not assume that tomorrow will come any one of us could just keel over and die I've had friends die of heart attacks they weren't even sick they didn't even know it and they just passed away one day out of the blue so we should all be living that way. There is no problem with that. The reason Brit's making this video is it isn't that Jesus could come at any minute. It's that Brit says over and over using the name of God, he will come soon. It may seem like a paradox to a lot of people, but I believe that's the biblical worldview that we should have. And so don't take my word for it because guys, you know what? I'm wrong sometimes. It's only a paradox when we take your statements every week that Jesus is coming soon and then try to figure out, well, then why should I do anything? It's the paradox that you have made, Brit, you and the rest of your watch liar club like this woman. Now, Brit says a lot of good things in the video. You can watch it yourself. He talks about your life is a vapor. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. And he's absolutely right. And, and if he wants to... Um, believe that Jesus could come at any second 
and therefore, you know, don't count on tomorrow. That's also true. That's logical. That makes sense. So let's listen to Michelle here. Jesus is at the door. See? Just look around you. Bible prophecy is unfolding at record speed. We are the last generation as evidenced all throughout scripture. So three things, Jesus is at the door. Look around you, Bible prophecy is unfolding at breakneck speed or whatever she said. And we are the last generation. So pretty clear, she means Jesus is coming any second. He's, he's months, maybe a year away. Again, none of these people would say he's five years away or 20 years away for sure, right? Only certain people see it. Some Christians don't see it, or maybe they don't want to see it. Notice, notice, the, notice the deliberate division of the body of Christ. Well, some of us see it. Some of us elite Christians who are really doing what the Lord wants us to do. We see it. The rest of you are asleep. Actually think we still have quite a bit of time here on this earth, or think that the times are just going to get better and we're going to go back to the land of good and plenty. Okay. If so again, here's another major mistake they make. They say there's only two things. This dichotomy they create out of nothing. You either um, think that we could have more time left or you think everything is going to get great and everything is swell today and it's just going to get better. There's more to it than that. I could be someone who doesn't think it's going to get great, who isn't living my life at the top of my game, and still thinks we have plenty of time before Jesus comes back. I'm just here to serve him and not worry about the future like that. I leave that to him. There's that angle, right? Can, can we do that, Michelle? Is that, does that meet your approval, Michelle? Or do we have to believe what you believe, otherwise we're lukewarm? If you honestly are going to bed at night and laying your head down on the pillow saying to yourself, all is well in the world. My 401k is thriving. My house is almost paid for. I'm retiring in a few years. My kids are successful. How dare Maybe they're you? They're getting married, maybe having babies, building houses. What's if wrong that, with that is what you're saying and that is what you're thinking, then listen to me and listen to me closely. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, let's let's all listen to this random woman on YouTube. I mean, she's going to scold us now and tell us we shouldn't be thinking that way. I bet you anything she thinks that way. I bet you anything that life is pretty good for her. I don't see her in a dark prison cell doing this video, thrown in prison for preaching the gospel as millions of Christians around the world today are faced with, as millions of Christians in the past have been faced with, I think Michelle's life's probably pretty good. I, what are you trying to say to us? Jesus is at the door. You don't know that. And if you're not saved, you need to do that right now. Okay, fine. You need That's to fine. make it right with Christ right now. There is yeah, a link below. Listen, listen to me, Michelle. That's not who you're talking to. You're talking to people like me. See, Michelle wants a lot of attention for whatever reason. And she knows she can get it by, by proclaiming, by hyping, by sensationalizing, by promising people that as bad as it, bad as it is, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. You can't do anything about it. That, that Satan has a, has a hold on the world. And, and even the gospel isn't powerful enough to overcome it. I mean, they don't say that. They don't say that directly. But the premillennial view says that there is nothing we can do to stop the slide of the world into hell. It will continue to get worse and culminate in this seven-year tribulation where God will finally say, Okay, that's enough. Now I'm going to go really kick butt. That's what they believe. And if you dare to go to bed at night and feel kind of okay about your retirement plans and what your kids are doing, then you should feel guilty for feeling that way. Why? Why? Where does the Bible say that? 
The Bible says not to love the world, but that's not loving the world. That's just living your life. If these people are going to tell us not to feel that way or think that way, I want to see them living that way. I want to see them telling their children, hey, uh, you don't need to go to school. You don't need to be a, a better person in this world. This world's going to hell. You don't need to go get a good job and a good career. Just work in whatever job you can get just to stay alive. Forget your education. I, I bet you anything people like Michelle don't do that with their kids. Hey, go, go, go to school. Get good grades. Go to college. Get a good, get a good education. Why? Well, because mom wants you to have a good job someday that you're not, you know, eking out a living, that you can, you can live okay. I mean, they, they don't live the way they talk. Ever. Ever. That's why the pre-mill fantasy is a broken system. Below in the description, press that five-minute video. It will change your life instantly. And if you are saved, don't be like Lot's wife. She had a tight grip on Sodom. Okay. And now hang perished. On. Listen, it's okay to love your life and make wait, plans. Wait, what? Wait, what, okay. what? You just said it's Lot's wife if you love your life and make plans. Because that's what are you saying? First, it's it's if you go to bed at night and you're actually somewhat confident in your retirement plan, and and you actually feel good about what your kids are doing. Watch out. You better listen to me. Listen to me carefully. But it's okay to love your life. Um, anyone else getting conflicting stories here? This is The reason is, is Michelle goes to bed at night sometimes like that. Where she feels pretty good about her life. And she can't resolve the conflict that she has created in her own head. Okay. But you had better have a loose grip on this life and this world because okay. the Bible says it is about to pass away. No, you're no, you're about to pass away. All of us are about to pass away. Life is a vapor. That's a much better message because I, I hate to break it to you, Michelle, but the track record you people have is abysmal. You have never been right about the world about to enter the tribulation and pass away. Never. When are you going to give this up? focus should be Jesus Christ because I am telling you he is coming oh, I know you. you don't want to believe it and please don't regret later on not listening to me hang on Michelle this hang on hang on I'm a Christian why would I ever regret Jesus coming why would I regret that I'm a Christian that's another thing they say that makes no sense most of you anyway believe that Everyone's going to be raptured who's a Christian, whether they even believe in a rapture or not. You guys are going to mock me on the way up, I'm told. So why? what would I regret? I mean, I'm making retirement plans because I know that things could go wrong. So I'm trying not to get blindsided by bad things. That's why I'm doing that. I want my kids to get educated so that they can have a chance in the crazy world that we live in. But you told me I'm not supposed to like that or enjoy that or or then you said I should enjoy that and like it. Just just not too much. Why does any of this matter if we're months away from the rapture? And if it's going to happen in my lifetime, I really don't care about my retirement plans and my kids are going with me if they're saved. So what do you see the conflict? This is all a conflict that they created. See, here's the biggest thing I got to tell you guys, and you must listen to me. Michelle and, uh, and Britt, they don't believe this. They don't actually believe the rapture is going to happen within months. They, they would love it to happen within months. They don't believe it. They just pretend like it's going to happen. They fantasize that it will happen. And they want attention for whatever reason. So they love telling other people and pretending that it's going to happen to other people. And then they get pushback. So they get defensive. So they make videos like this. It's okay to, to you know, I, I get why you're skeptical of my claims since I've been 100% wrong for centuries. It's okay. That's okay. I, I understand. 
but but this time we're right, and, and you're a fool if you don't listen to me. Keep listening to me. Yeah, exactly. Keep listening to me. That's what I want, and I'll make up any excuse to try to get myself out of the quagmire I've created so that you keep watching.